1822, George IV visited Scotland. It became a special occasion, as it was the first royal monarch's visit since uh, Char Charles II's coronation in 1651. It was also a first visit by a member of the Hanoverian royal family since the Jacobite rising in 1745. The king had been in Edinburgh between 15th and 29th of August, entertained by the intense program of events aiming to showcase Scotland, its people and culture. The program was curated by Sir Walter Scott and included a military parade, a procession, a civil banquet, visits to Edinburgh Castle and Holyrood Palace, visits to the theatre and a special church service and St Giles Cathedral. There were also two balls hosted by Piers and Caledonian Hunt Society in Edinburgh Assembly Rooms at George Street. The king was keen on everything Scottish, which influenced the selection of dances and music played at these balls. Descriptions from the newspapers and diaries of the time indicated that the king spent one hour on both balls in the ballroom where traditional reels and strathways were performed. Interestingly, the description of Pierce Ball showed that there was a performance of the Strathspey for two by a lady and a gentleman. We were interested in this video to recreate this dance using period dance instructions of the time. To recreate a Straspe in the style of the beginning of the 19th century, we used the manuscript Concha Dances a Paris 1818, written by an anonymous author. The name is misleading as the manuscript refers to the Scottish dancing scene of the period. Currently, it is located in the National Library of Scotland. The dance notebook contains uh, descriptions of Straspe setting steps, as well as reels, country dances and quadrilles. In its uh, Straspe section, Contra Dances a Paris uh, has uh, the descriptions of 11 step combinations with brief explanation of the technique. The basic building blocks of the technique are Straspe Sisson, Straspe Assemble, Straspe Chasse, and Straspe Jate. Sam is going to demonstrate our interpretation of these instructions and show several combinations described in the dance notebook. 
the peculiar and prominent thrust by step is a compound of isom and assembly, preceded and followed by a hop on the other foot. Doing it slowly, it uh, will look like this. And seven, and eight, and one, and two, and three, and four. However, the author suggested that each component, strass by seesaw and strass by assembly, should take one croce of the music. To fulfill this requirement at the fastest speed of the dance, we came up with the following execution. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. Other basic components of the Strasbourg dance technique described in the dance notebook are Strasbourg jetés, which could be done with uh, the tendu forward. One, two, one, two. And tendu backwards. One, two, one, two. Also, the offer uh, described two Strasbourg chasses. Strasbourg chasse number one, one, two, and a one. And Strasbourg chasse number two. One, two, and a one. The anonymous author based his description of Strasbourg steps on uh, French dance terms of the period, which were also used to uh, describe the quadrille technique. Sam, you previously recreated quadrille steps. So, um, what do you think is the difference between the quadrille technique and this description of the Strasbourg steps? So, although the steps are the same, I think the difference is very much in that with quadrille we're looking at a, a technique based around plié relevé, it's much softer, the toes are kept on the floor and of course the music is much slower. Um, if you believe Gordou Dow we're looking at 40 bars per minute. Uh, with the Strasbourg he uses the word hop an awful lot and the music is much faster. So, um, to me it indicates a much more aerial and springy uh, style. How much details the manuscript provided? for us to recreate the steps and the technique? Uh, he didn't give us very much, mainly just uh, the names of the steps. There are some uh, descriptions in his earlier section on quadrille, so we were fine with the assembly. Uh, we did have to refer to other manuals of the time quite a lot, so mainly to Alexander Straffy, who of course is writing from Edinburgh. So uh, to him we looked uh, for the jeté tendu description, the season, uh, simple and dessus, and um, other forms of jeté. The Strathspe chasse is an interesting one. It, it seems to resemble very closely a pas de bourre. Uh, so for this we look to Charles Mason and Gordou Dow. Do you think this particular style of uh, Strathspe steps would be performed in the ballrooms? I believe so, yeah, because of the context of the manuscript, it's very much describing social dancing. Uh, so he gives us uh, quadrille, English country dancing, Scottish reel, and of course, uh, Strathspey. So it strikes me as a social dance manual. How did you find uh, the execution and performance of these Strathspey steps? I didn't find the execution of the steps as we reconstructed them to be particularly challenging. Uh, the challenging bit was coming up with a suggested reconstruction. Next, Sam will demonstrate several Strasbourg setting step combinations suggested in the Contra Dances à Paris manuscript.
So the Stratospe is a type of dance tune which appeared as a distinct form of reel in Scotland in the middle of the 18th century. So it took a little while for the exact form to be defined, but at least by the 19th century, the Stratospe and the reel were different forms of tune. So they're both in duple time, they both are 16 bars long, and they have two equal sections of eight bars. But there are some differences. The reel is commonly notated in two. It's characterized by fast moving groups of quavers, and often it's punctuated by the burl, which is this kind of bowed ornament of three fast notes played on the beat. The Strathspe, again, also in duple time, but it's notated in 4-4, four, four. it's characterised by dotted rather than straight rhythms, particularly use of the scotch snap, which is a figure made up of one fast note played on the beat followed by a dotted note. Now the exact origins of the Strathspe remain somewhat obscure. Writers in the end of the 18th century tended to think that it was an invention of fiddling families in the Speyside region, which remains a kind of dominant narrative. Scholars today are questioning that narrative and suggesting instead that it's a kind of cross fertilization between Highland and Lowland forms, particularly Gallic vocal rhythms and elements of social dances from the Lowlands. Now, interestingly, in 1760, the piper and writer Joseph MacDonald reckons that this was predominantly music for this instrument, the fiddle or violin possibly because of its ability to play really incisive rhythms. Now, the tempo of the Strathspe has undergone lots of changes over the years. So there's at least two sources in the second half of the 19th century, which give this ridiculously fast tempo of something like crotchet equals 190 beats per minute. Over the course of the 20th century, the Strathspe has gotten gradually slower particularly in its use in Scottish country dancing. So today, fiddlers will play the Strathspeys anywhere between 110 and, say, 135 beats per minute for the crotchet. In the 18th century, there's also evidence that the Strathspeys were being played much slower. Generally, they're, they're notated as much more stately than the real, often marked slow or slowish. And in addition, there's lots of dense written out ornamentation in lots of Strathspey tunes, which pull us into a slower tempo. Now, in the absence of exact information on tempi from the 1820s, we're letting the music and the steps guide us, particularly in our first tune, Breakin Castle, which has all of this dense ornamentation, which is again pulling us into this slower tempo. The version of Breakin Castle that we're playing was notated by Gao in the early 1800s, and it was actually performed by Nathaniel Gao's band in one of the balls for the visit of George IV in 1822. Um, Scottish twosomes or couple dances were mentioned in diaries and books of the period. However, rarely a detailed description of the dance uh, were given. One of the interesting examples of um, Scottish couple dance is Strathspey Minuet. It is known from the middle of the 18th century when it was first performed to Bonnie Prince Charlie in 1745 when he was hosted at a lute house uh, near Blair Apple. Later, in 1780s, the captain uh, Edward Topham left a more detailed description of this dance, indicating that it was a merge between a minuet, a couple dance originated in France at the end of the 17th century, and Strathspey music and steps. Strathspey minuet experienced a surge in popularity after it was performed by Mrs. Parker on London, Dublin, and Edinburgh stages. Also, um, our research showed uh, that it was taught to public in 1820s by Mrs. Parker herself, Thomas Wilson, and other dancing masters of the time. So we use Strathspey Minuet as a basis for our choreography. In addition, we included side-by-side -side execution of the Strathspey setting steps as it is done today in Highland dance displays. <laughs> 